uh, I feel like I still need time on what I want to share, so please bear with me. Um, but I was thinking of um, this verse that uh, encouraged me from the article that I read on the CFC website, um, 1 John 4, 17, where it says, um, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And um, there were many things in that article that I want to take to heart, but I was, but as I was reading it in the Bible today right now, um, <clears throat> I felt like the Lord was, um, you know, pointing me to... Um, a need, a real need in my heart, and um, I'm so thankful for that. that um, he was pointing me to um, um, that phrase where it says, God is love, and um, and I was thinking that uh, the best way I can be like the Lord is to be filled with love, and uh, I mean, this week has been uh, a trying week for us, and um, just battling between um, pleasing the Lord and and standing for Him, and at the same time having to um, love love people in your family who are not in the Lord. And um, just reading it backwards, it says God is love, and uh, we are perfected when we love. And I just pray that the Lord will um, uh, fill me with love for those who are not in the Lord, and uh, make me tender and gentle and humble at heart. Uh, but looking forward, um, uh, the article that I read today uh, from the CFC website, um, it says the Lord will make you an encouragement and a threat to the devil. And I was just so encouraged from all that I read there. And I pray that the Lord will help me to keep my conscience clear, to humble myself before him and um, to really want him to be uh, beautiful in my life. And and I want to grow from strength to strength. Um, when I was single, I sought the Lord. I was I was waiting. I was at the crossroads, and it's easy to uh, seek Him there. But the Lord's been good to me now, and uh, I don't want to slow down. I don't want to slacken. And um, that article ends by saying um, Jesus grew from strength to strength, and so did His apostles. And I want to be a hammer in God's hands. And uh, it encourages you there to say, um, "I'm sorry, but." Yeah, it encourages you to say, um, you know, eat less, live more simply and give away what you don't need. And I want to take all of this to heart. For And it says for a greater anointing, do these things, eat less, live more simply and give away what you don't need for a greater anointing. And um, again, I, I want to find my identity in the Lord um, to take that verse to heart that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And I believe that the Lord will help me. Good morning, guys. Uh, I was blessed by this verse uh, this week in Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Uh, it says here, be on your guard uh, so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life and that they will not come on you suddenly like a trap. Uh, the thing that spoke to me was uh, that I shouldn't allow the worries of this life to weigh my heart down. I've noticed that if I allow that to happen, then I lose my focus and I uh, won't have uh, the time for studying God's word or to seek his kingdom. Uh, in, in context of this, I was blessed to see David's response to different circumstances in his own life. Uh, if you turn to Psalm 119 verse 95, uh, it says here uh, that David uh, says here that the wicked wait for me to destroy me. I shall diligently consider your testimonies. You know, David was uh, someone who involved in battles all his life, and you know, you know, he saw people lying in wait to take down his life, instead of you know focusing on the issue at hand, instead of trying to uh, come up with strategies to preserve himself. His response was, "I'm not gonna focus on that. Instead, I'm gonna focus on God's word. I'm gonna consider God's word diligently." And you see the same uh, response in a different verse in 143 of the same chapter. Uh, it says, Trouble and anguish have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. Again, it says in verse 23, Even though princes sit and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. No matter what situation life uh, you know, threw up before uh, David, <coughs> David always had one response. I'm going to ensure that I stay focused on studying God's word. I stay focused on meditating God's word. Uh, 
and that's something that spoke to me this week that i shouldn't allow any worries or case of this life to weigh my heart down but i should constantly seek to get back go back to his word and study his word thanks Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to share a quick thought uh, this morning. Um, Jesus said in Luke nine twenty three, um, "If any if any one of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me." Um, I heard so much recently about denying self, and the more I heard it, the more I got confused. I um, was asking lord how to recognize myself you you ask me to see that um as the the biggest enemy in this universe you know um it's the most hated thing that i should hate but uh, how can i see myself where it is such a hateful thing and a uh, few things came to my mind um as i look back in in my own life in 2016 it's it's almost like uh, myself is in the sh stealth mode and during the time of temptation and trial it comes out and i can see it until then there is uh, some confusion things are going okay or i read the word of god and i see this uneasiness in me that i don't want to do it i don't want to go and apologize or i don't want to um correct things myself is 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 stretching its muscles and and becoming very strong so i have seen that in my own life that there are times especially test and temptation where it is more clearer that our self is against god it's an enemy of god at such times i want to run to god into his presence and in the process uh, as we read or heard so many times that our, se our self will have to be crushed it had the sword has to fall on ourselves and uh, when it does then we we meet jesus so in that most difficult stage when uh, i am feeling uh, irritated or frustrated or myself i'm seeing this wicked self i have to run to god and the beautiful thing that god is giving us is he will give himself we will know him and uh, also knowing jesus um, for the most part has been i had knowledge in 2016 in some areas in some areas god has make it life so knowing jesus is not what i understand what jesus did in the gospels what all the parables he preached and everything knowing jesus is knowing jesus in my life am i seeing jesus life being true in different areas in my life some areas are measurable some areas are not uh, it's very difficult so i'm asking god lord in this year 2017 um i want to follow you i want to take up my cross and follow you i want to deny myself in every time it raises and i want to go into his secret presence and receive god and jesus and then i want to bear fruit for jesus i don't want to just say uh to myself more than anybody else that i don't want to deceive myself saying i know i'm knowing jesus and i'm not seeing fruits in my life knowing jesus it's indispensable that the fruits are evident and if i'm not seeing fruits in my own life then i have to question myself lord uh, do i really know you i don't i mean i they have to be measurable for me at least in some areas and i have seen very very few last year i believe with all my heart that uh, i want to be more determined this year that uh, i want to ask god god please show me some measurable fruits where i can see these are the fruits by jesus in my life and i believe with all my heart that god is going to help me with that thank you thank you good morning there's a beautiful paraphrase of psalm 1016 uh, psalm 1016 it says in the living bible that The Psalmist David has made the godly of the land his heroes. And I think that's just a wonderful phrase to make the godly of the land our heroes. I thought of this first because I have had the privilege these past few weeks uh, to have witnessed 
the memorial services for uh, two of our families here at NCCF. And what really touched me about these services was that these were men who had made their lives completely for God, and they made their lives count for God. And that, for me, was a tremendous challenge. And I was thinking about the lives of these men, and I was thinking, well, what was one thing that was in common for these people? Because they were com two completely different parts of the world, completely different cultures, yet they made their lives count for God. And I'm sure there's many reasons, but the reason that, but the one thing that spoke up to me the most was that these people had a genuine care for God's people, and not just their physical being, but for their spiritual uh, well-being. I remember hearing in one memorial service how one person was sick, and even though this person was sick, he would still call the different brothers at church just to see how they're doing and, and try to encourage them. And then at another memorial service, I heard just people come up time and time again saying how much of this person has been a light and has been a guide to, uh, to their lives. And this really challenged me. And how am I going to apply this to my life? Well, I realized that for me to be able to come to this church, it's been a tremendous privilege. It's a tremendous privilege to hear many of the, the truths that we get to hear here at NCCF. And sometimes I wonder, well, God, you know, I, I know a lot of this stuff now. Why can't I go around and, and share a bit more with, with other people? Why don't I have more opportunities to go share the things I've learned here with those outside? Even in the Bay Area alone, there's, there's plenty of need. And one thing I feel that God's been teaching me in the season is to make sure um, that I have a love for God's people first before I start going out and, and telling people things. Sometimes I look at my Christian life and it feels like, if I had to use a picture that Brother Zach said, it's kind of like a skeleton. So all my bones are there. I have all, I've been in the church for six years and I know a lot of the, you know, key truths and bones and stuff. So it's, 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 it's skeleton, it's, you can see it. Um, but there's just a little bit of skin over it. And sometimes I feel God saying, I can't send a skeleton out to talk to people because you'll scare everyone away. And that's really how I see my Christian life uh, sometimes. And I feel like 2017, one of my goals for this year is to put on some weight, uh, spiritually speaking, and to put on some flesh uh, on these bones, because then that way it'll be presentable to, to other people. And I want to end with an encouragement for this. This is in 1 John 4, 7. This is 1 John 4, 7. It says that, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And I love that phrase, for love is from God. I think one of the pressures that I give myself sometimes is, oh, now I have to go manufacture this love. I have to go somehow develop this love. But I really like this phrase because it says that for love is from God. And it just gives me tremendous confidence going into 2017 that if I ask God, Lord, give me the love that you have for your people, give me the burden that you have for your church, he will give it. And he won't give simply a spoonful, but he'll give it to me more than all that I ask or think. I know this is 100% true because this is part of God's will for all of us. Um, so this gives me a lot of encouragement for uh, 2017. And I hope to, again, put on a little bit more weight, especially uh, this this year. Thank you.